What's going on guys? So you guys are here because you want to pass the OSCP certificate. So just to start off, before we even go into you know the OSCP content itself, I think it would be best to prepare prior to going into the OSCP. So you know there's some people that can have no experience in security um, by the three months of lab time and just go straight at it and pass on their first attempt. Um, I just don't think that'll be the most enjoyable experience. So I'm gonna suggest what I think is the best uh, pathway to the OSCP. So personally, I passed on my second attempt. Um, it was a great learning experience, the first attempt. I really honed my skills after, and I'm going to you know, walk you through my whole journey. So prior to going into the OSCP, like I mentioned, it's, I think it's very important and vital to hone some of your skills just so the experience is more enjoyable. So what I had done was I did TCM's Practical Ethical Hacking course. Um, from there, I did his Privilege Escalation courses, and I did some Hack the Box machines and some Try Hack Me machines. So with those Hack the Box machines, um, if you're just getting started, some of them can be quite hard, and you might get stuck and kind of you know frustrated. And one of the resources that's really helpful is IPSEC. So IPSEC has a YouTube channel, and he'll walk you through uh, the hack the box machines and you know it's just a really great resource highly recommended especially you know when you're getting into those uh, those hack the box machines so yeah overall that's what I did prior to jumping into the OSCP I did those three courses from TCM I did some practical uh, hacking work on hack the box around 15 machines with some boxes on try hack me um, and at my previous job just want to throw this out there I did a little bit of Python and some SQL so I had a bit of experience in those two which definitely helped me throughout the course I'm gonna make a video as my next video on programming languages um, for the OICP what's gonna be beneficial to learn um, or at least you know get familiar with so stay tuned for that um, but yeah so that's what I had done there's other resources if you don't want to you know go down the TCM route you can you know do hack the box training path like let's say the CPTS some people say that's harder than the OSCP but it helps you prepare you can do the EJPT version 2 a lot of people do that um, you can do some try hack me learning paths like you know junior penetration tester and then move from there or you can use free free resources on YouTube and you know just tackle some of the free resources on try hack me if you are on a budget all right, guys, so now we're going to dive into the OSCP material. So you've purchased your course, and now what does it consist of? So first off, you have your training material. So this is going to guide you through all the content uh, that's covered in the OSCP. And this is going to be in the form of readings and videos. So the videos are essentially identical to the readings. They're just like the readings in video form. Um, I personally, from my experience, I didn't use any videos. I just used the readings because it's just how I prefer to do it. You may like the videos. You got to try it out and see what you like. And OSCP offers um, bonus points. So you can qualify for 10 bonus points for the exam. So in order to qualify for those bonus points, you need to complete at least 80% of each module in the training material. So the training material is broken up into several different modules that make up the OCP course and you, did you need to complete 80% of each module. So each little portion of um, that course to qualify for those 10 bonus points on the exam. And then the second portion of the OSCP is the challenge lab. So after you complete you know, your training material, uh, OFSEC puts you through a more vague um, situation with hacking computers that you're in a situation where there's not as many tight constraints. So, you know, in your uh, module labs, you have specific constraints at the end of each module. In your challenge labs, you may have to apply concepts from the entire training in order to solve a specific computer or box you could refer to in the challenge labs. So in order to qualify for the 10 bonus points, you need to get at least 30 proof hashes uh, on your challenge lab. So you have to essentially complete 30 boxes get 30 proof hashes, and then once you get these 30 proof hashes and you've completed 80% of your module labs, you will qualify for the 10 bonus points on the exam. So something I really want to emphasize is during your uh, OSCP studying, while you're going through you know, the training modules and the challenge labs, it's super important to take notes. So your notes are going to be your backbone for the OSCP exam, and even in penetration testing and ethical hacking, and offensive security, your notes are really, you know, 
what you're going to be relying on when you're on engagements and um, throughout your certificates like the OSCP. So personally, what I used was I broke it up into two different sections. So I did, I used um, OneNote and that was my note taking, my note taking app that I used throughout the training material. So as I went through the training material, you know, I took condensed my notes from the training in OneNote. And then as I was going through the challenge labs, I made a separate set of notes in Cherry Tree, and these notes were significantly more condensed than OneNote. They were just commands. So maybe a small description and a command um, that I'd use, let's say, you know, a bash command or a PowerShell command that I'd use in a specific situation. And I had these broken up into different sections. So let's say, you know, I had a cherry tree notebook for all web, web app attacks and I had all the commands that I needed and any condensed information. So let's say on the exam, I would refer to both my OneNote and my cherry tree, but just for speed and, you know, efficiency reasons, the, the cherry tree came, uh, the cherry tree notes came in handy because, you know, I had those commands right there. I didn't have to um, refer through a big stack of notes like OneNote to get them. So let's go through the three ways that you can pass your OSCP exam. So for this demonstration here, um, I'm assuming you guys are going for the bonus points, uh, just because I highly recommend going for the bonus points. It makes it definitely easier to pass your OSCP. So here, the first situation here is to solve the Active Directory set, solve a full standalone machine. So you get the low privilege flag and you know the root or administrator flag, and you get your bonus points. And that sums for 70 points. So here, you, you know, get that Active Directory set again, two standalone boxes, but only the low privilege flag on each computer. Um, and then you get your bonus points for a total of 70 points. And the last one is to solve three standalone boxes, 20 points each with your bonus points, and then you have enough to pass. So one of the, the things I want to, you know, drill down here that helped me um, to pass uh, the OSCP was on my first attempt, I was really strong in AD, you know, coming from TCM, uh, doing those courses and just generally the boxes I had done, I was really strong with Active Directory. So I had confidence that I was going to, you know, really focus on one of these paths to pass. And I really didn't consider myself able to do this uh, path to pass. And I think that's a mistake. And it was a mistake I made on my first attempt, because if the Active Directory set is really hard or you just get stuck on it, you kind of don't have another option to pass. In your head, you've set a mental blocker that you can't do the three standalones. So what I'd recommend is actually prepare to get 100 points on the OSCP. Whether you get 100 points or not, prepare to be able to either do three standalones and the Active Directory set or pass with either three of these methods. So have confidence you can do three standalones and have confidence you can do the AD set or the other options. I think that'll maximize your best uh, potential to pass the OSCP exam. All right, guys, let's talk about some other resources for extra practice. So for me, what I did um, in between, you know, my first and second attempt, I had already done all the course material. I went through it in a super in-depth way. I wasn't going to go back and go through the course material again because I felt I had a strong understanding of it. Um, but there were areas that I needed to improve, let's say hacking box faster, hacking boxes faster, getting better at initial access to boxes. So I had already done um, the challenge labs to get the bonus points and I had, and I had already done you know, the course in a lot of detail. So if you're in a situation like that, or maybe even you haven't even attempted the OICP yet and you want a bit more practice, I'd suggest uh, TJ Null's Proving Grounds list. So he'll provide a list of OSCP-like uh, boxes and you can find them on Proving Grounds. I did around just under 20 boxes and you know that really helped me pack boxes faster, You know, just get more practice under my belt and get better at gaining initial access to boxes. All right, guys, let's talk about pre-exam day and exam day things you wanna do. So. Before your exam day, you want to review the exam guide. So the exam guide, it's a bit annoying to read. It's really long, um, but it's super, super important. There's a bunch of information there about um, tools you're not allowed to use on the OICP, specific you know, techniques like spoofing that you may not be allowed to use on the OICP. It talks about reporting um, requirements. It talks about you know, how to f name your files when you submit them uh, for the exam. And 
a lot of these things they're super minor but they can cause you to fail the exam so uh, it's definitely not worth you know putting so much effort into studying for the exam and then not reading this exam guide uh, and with enough detail so I highly recommend I read it maybe five times before my OSCP exam and I recommend you read it a few times as well the other thing I'd recommend is having meals prepared for the exam so the last thing you want to do is you know, have to leave your office and spend whatever 30 minutes cooking some meal to prepare uh, and just throw you off, you know, your, your rhythm or momentum you have. So I'd prepare uh, some meals, whether you have, you know, a girlfriend or you're living with your parents um, or just meal prep yourself before, um, prepare, prepare a few meals for your OSCP exam day. And the last thing I'll mention that helped me for exam day is sleep. So I know it sounds like a cliche thing, but on my first attempt, I really didn't get much sleep. I was super, super stressed uh, before the, exam the attempt. I have taken many uh, final exams uh, in school previously, and I've never had this amount of stress uh, prior to a sleep. So I don't know what it was, maybe, you know, just a lot on the line for this OCP exam, and I barely slept my first attempt. And going into the second attempt, what I did was um, I went to the doctor and I got prescribed sleeping pills and I know it's, it sounds a bit ridiculous but that helped me get you know close to that eight, eight hour mark uh, for sleep and that helped me significantly so you know do what you got to do that helps you get a good sleep whether it's you know have a night routine uh, whatever works for you but definitely prioritize a good sleep. I wish you guys the best of luck on your OSCP exam. Um, in the future I'm going to be doing a video on programming languages that could benefit you and that uh, I'd recommend you get familiar with for the OSCP. That's going to be my next video. And I will cover um, my OSCP experience with an M chip laptop. So if you have an M1, M2 uh, Mac computer and you're curious if you can use it on your OSCP exam or you're worried that some tools might not work, I'll cover um, how I configured my virtual machines with my M chip Mac uh, to work seamlessly for the OSCP. Again, I wish you guys the best of luck and I'll see you guys next time.